Hey everybody, it's Jason Blaha here. Today I want to talk to you guys a little bit about minor variations and basic exercises and why sometimes they even have benefits, both in terms of your gains and injury prevention. So let me put on my plus five out of weaponsmithing. I'll work on skill up my crafting a little bit and let's talk about this. Now, I wanted to bring this up because yesterday I mentioned that I had switched over to and actually demonstrated me doing the supinated grip pin lay row. And someone kind of chimed in and said, I thought you said that people really mostly just need the basics. If the pin lay row is a basic exercise, why change it? And the point is, guys, when we're talking about minor variations on a basic exercise, there's still a basic exercise. And what I mean is, if we're talking about minor differences in grip width or hand placement or foot placement, that's still a basic exercise, isn't it? Uh, and I'll give you a perfect example. Chin-ups versus pull-ups. Those are two basic exercises. Two of the oldest exercises known to man. Uh, they're basic exercises. They both have amazing benefits. They're both fantastic exercises. Now, I've created the argument that for most people, the chin-up might be a slightly superior exercise, unless you have sport-specific reasons for the, the pull-up. Uh, with an overhand grip and there are people due to maybe certain career choices where that might be useful uh, particularly to people who might need to pull themselves in and out of helicopter SWAT teams certain sorts of soldiers things like that there could be benefits to that I don't think anyone's going to argue that but you're dealing with a sport specific reason but they're both still basic exercises changing in uh, hand position how about the normal bench press wide grip bench press versus a close grip bench press they're both basic exercises. They're accepted as basic exercises. You're just changing the width of the grip. Uh, you're still moving the bar the same basic range of motion. There's variations, just like with the chin-up and pull-up. One of them has more range of motion than the other. Closed grip bench press actually adds range of motion. You've got to move the bar further, usually. Uh, it adds a couple inches to how far the bar travels. Makes it harder. Uh, I'm a big fan of the closed grip bench press. I think it's a better overall exercise than the bench press. But they're both basic exercises. And that's kind of the point we're making. Uh, same thing, how about a strict standing press versus a push press? Those fall under the category of basic exercises, even though one of them uses a little bit of leg drive and the other doesn't. Still a big full range of motion, widely accepted full body exercise. It works a large number of muscles. Uh, that you're moving a relatively heavy weight, using a lot of muscles and moving it through a long range of motion. That's our basic exercises. Uh, time proven. So doing something like a pin lay row uh, with a reverse grip is no different than doing a pull up versus a chin up. You're just changing the hand position a little bit. Now, that being said, are there benefits to doing that sometimes? Yeah. Sometimes tweaking a basic exercise to get a benefit that's specific to you can pay off. It doesn't mean it's not the basics, um, but people shouldn't ever say I'm never going to deviate from the squat bench deadlift, uh, standing strict press, and the barbell row. Now, a person can get pretty big, pretty strong doing those five exercises and never changing their technique, uh, but there is something to be said sometimes for things like injury prevention, uh, better overall development, sometimes by tweaking an exercise for your needs a little bit. A uh, perfect example, by doing variations of an exercise every now and then and actually keeping tabs on that, meaning a progressive overload is there, you might work muscles slightly differently. You might have a muscle group that maybe doesn't quite get the development that you might want uh, due to using the exact same version of an exercise over and over and over. So if every now and then you maybe change the grip width on an exercise or the foot placement or something relatively minor, some minor change in the bar path, it can sometimes shift the balance in a couple different muscles a little differently. It might make the difference between maybe getting a little more chest development if chest is lagging or a certain head of the tricep. Uh, it can bring up weak points just to re every now and then incorporate variations of these and to work on their actual progressive overload, meaning if you're going to switch from a pull-up to a chin-up, you don't just randomly come in once a month and do a set of overhand grip pull-ups. You probably need to make sure you're actually progressing on it. Uh, and these variations that you do, you need to do them with some degree of consistency to get the benefits from it. Also, there's something to be said for shifts in bar paths, meaning if you've been doing strictly uh, the push press and you switch to a strict press, it might use a slightly different bar path, right? Uh, it can, or you switch to dumbbells for a standing press. You're going to get stronger sometimes through a different range of motion that's slightly outside of your normal one. So if technique ever breaks down, things get heavy. We fail sometimes on exercises that we shouldn't. Uh, if you're stronger through a couple different uh, bar paths, 
you can reduce your chances of injury slightly if things go wrong because you'll be strong also through a slight variation of that bar path when the bar drifts outside of its normal position. And that's oftentimes how people get hurt. When you're grinding or you reach muscle failure, it's the breakdown in technique and a bar moving through a path you're not used to uh, that gets you hurt. Well, if you do at least one variation every now and then and have a strength base built through a slightly different bar path of a basic exercise, uh, you do reduce your chances a bit of getting hurt uh, if those things happen. Also, it can change, it can reduce chances of overuse injuries to switch them up every now and then. And I'm not saying people have to do this, and I want people to understand that there can be benefits to doing this, but you don't actually have to do it. You can just stick to five or six basic exercises your entire life. Uh, as long as you don't really grind anything too hard, you pay attention to deloads, don't um, allow yourself to excessively overreach or get overuse injuries uh, because you listen to your body, pay attention, uh, you know your limits, and you'll probably be fine. Your odds of actually getting hurt are relatively low. Most of our injuries occur from either overuse, from chronic overreaching, inflammation in a given tendon or insertion point that eventually sometimes something gives, a breakdown in form, that's usually where your injuries occur. Uh, so you don't have to do these variations, it's just stuff that you can benefit from from time to time. And sometimes it can help push you past a plateau in your training, whether it's muscle mass or strength or performance related. Uh, to change things up a little bit every now and then. But there's also the point of looking at an exercise and saying, hey, if I make this slight, slight tweak to this basic exercise, will it improve my weak points in some way? Uh, will it uh, reduce my injury chance in some way? And a perfect example, uh, the closed grip bench press. I'm of the opinion, and a lot of strength coaches are out there, that using a closed grip bench press most of the year is easier on your rotator cuffs and you build the same amount of strength and same amount of muscle mass with a slightly lighter weight. So it's a little easier on connective tissue, things like your wrist, stuff like that, uh, to use a closed grip bench press because for again, you're moving the weight further, and the leverages aren't quite as ideal. So again, you put less downward force for the same amount of uh, volume and tension and everything that's created on the actual muscles. Uh, and again, easier on the rotator cuffs and the shoulder joints. So in that case, you know, it makes sense to say, okay, well, if my shoulders have been bothering me a little bit, or they get inflamed every now and then, maybe switching to the closed grip bench press is still a basic exercise. Switching to the closed grip bench press for a while and seeing if that helps with the problem because it's easier on the shoulders. So there are times when we want to use a variation for injury prevention, maybe due to inflammation, uh, particularly inflammation of sensitive things like wrists or uh, rotator cuffs, things like that. So there's certainly something to be said for doing variations and minor tweaks on your big exercises or something like that. And I'm not saying a major change like doing a really heavy partial or cutting the range of motion 30 or 40 percent uh, or things like that. That's not what I mean by a minor tweak or changing to a bunch of accommodating resistance. I mean a minor tweak, changing a hand position, overhand versus underhand, a grip width a foot position, foot width, uh, bar placement on your back for a squat. This is what I mean by variations, maybe doing a front squat instead of just a back squat all the time. Uh, these are all still basic exercises and there can be benefits uh, for a number of different reasons from using variations of these even if it sometimes involves changing permanently or semi-permanently to a different variation such as again a chin-up versus a pull-up, closed grip versus a wide grip bench press. Uh, so that's that's the best way to look at it, but it's still the basics even if you make a minor tweak to a basic exercise. Alright guys, but that's really all I have to say on that today. I hope it's been informative, and I will talk to you guys next time.